You're good. I'm reading. Oh, you're reading? Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Two it is days in a row, and now every, everybody every, every is getting single, to hear. Every single office this week, I have completely flipped the script on Laura. So she, please pray for my faithful and and uh, and devoted partner in prayer here, as I continue to. Uh, to say, hey, do you want to read or lead? And then she says, I want to read. So I didn't leave it for her to lead. And then I, she wants to lead. So I leave it to her to read. It's just been one of those weeks. Sometimes oh, all good. you can do is just show up and be faithful. So that's what we're doing today. Thank you for being here. It is time for morning prayer on our busy day of mission and ministry here at St. Peter's. We have morning prayer, then we have a Bible study at 10, noonday prayers and devotions, meetings, pastoral calls. We have uh, the supper tonight, It is, it, and then we have evening prayers. It is a full day for us, and we're very excited to be together here in this virtual space for morning prayer. We do not have a commemoration today, so we'll get right to it. But uh, before we do, please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you are watching on YouTube, please and remember that we take your uh, intercessions and thanksgivings to heart, pray them through the day, and then add them on at the 5 p.m. service. If you're watching live on Facebook, make sure you put them into the feed now on the live chat. We'll make sure they get prayed over at the end of this service. And all things know that we are honored and blessed to welcome you home to St. Peter's for morning prayer. Here we go. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. In unison, the mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our Psalms this morning, 101 and 109. I'll offer the odd, please respond with the even. I will sing of loyalty and of justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perverseness of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. One who secretly slanders a neighbor I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart I will not tolerate. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Do not be silent, O God of my praise, for wicked and deceitful mouths are open against me. Speaking against me with lying tongues, they beset me with words of hate 
and attack me without cause. In return for my love, they accuse me, even while I make prayer for them. So they reward me evil for good and hatred for my love. They say, appoint a wicked man against him. Let an accuser stand on his right. When he is tried, let him be found guilty. Let his prayer be counted as sin. May his days be few. May another seize his position. May his children be orphans and his wife a widow. May his children wander about and beg. May they be driven out of the ruins they inhabit. May the creditor seize all that he has. May strangers plunder the fruits of his toil. May there be no one to do him a kindness, nor anyone to pity his orphaned children. May his posterity be cut off. May his name be blotted out in the second generation. May the iniquity of his father be remembered before the Lord, and do not let the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, and may his memory be cut off from the earth. For he did not remember to show kindness, but pursued the poor and needy and the brokenhearted to their death. He loved to curse, let curses come on him. He did not like blessing, may it be far from him. He clothed himself with cursing as his coat, may it soak into his body like water, like oil into his bones. May it be like a garment that he wraps around himself, like a belt that he wears every day. May that be the reward of my accusers from the Lord, of those who speak evil against my life. But you, O oh Lord, my Lord, act on my behalf for your namesake, because your steadfast love is good, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is pierced within me. I am gone like a shadow at evening. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting. My body has become gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me according to your steadfast love. Let them know that this is your hand. You, O Lord, have done it. Let them curse, but you will bless. Let my assailants be put to shame. May your servant be glad. May my accusers be clothed with dishonor. May they be wrapped in their own shame as in a mantle. With my mouth, I will give great thanks to the Lord. I will praise him in the midst of the throng. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban, with his kinsfolk, camped in the hill country of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? You have deceived me and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not tell me? I would have sent you away with mirth and songs, with tambourine and lyre. And why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? What you have done is foolish. It is in my power to do, to you, to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night saying, take heed that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. Even though you had to go because you longed greatly for your father's house, why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered Laban, because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. But anyone with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our kinsfolk, point out what I have that is yours and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two maids, but he did not find them. And he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them in the camel's saddle and sat on them. 
Laban felt all about it in the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, let not my Lord be angry that I cannot rise before you for the way of women is upon me. So he searched, but did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry and upbraided Laban. Jacob said to Laban, what is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Although you have felt about through all my goods, what have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my kinsfolk and your kinsfolk, so that they may beside, decide between us two. These 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn by wild beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it myself. Of my hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. It was like this with me. By the day the heat consumed me, and the cold by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These 20 years I have been in your house. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages 10 times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac had not been on my side, surely now you, had a, you would have sent me away empty handed. God saw my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, the daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, all that you see is mine. But what can I do today about these daughters of mine or about their children whom they have borne? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I. Let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And Jacob said to his kinsfolk, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore, he called it Galid and the pillar Mizpah. For he said, the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you ill treat my daughters, or if you take wives in addition to my daughters, though no one else is with us, remember that God is witness between you and me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the third Psalm of Isaiah, together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you children because you know the Father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young people because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not let the world or the things in the world, do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. 
for all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Deum, together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, and you, we believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts of God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis and a reminder to place your intercessions and thanksgivings in the comments section of the live chat and also on YouTube in the remarks together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. 
where there is injury, pardon, where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for Padre Juan, and for the people of All Saints Lakewood as he recovers from his stroke. Pray for Marge, for Anne Marie, for Anne and Elizabeth, for Betty. Pray for all those who struggle, are struggling with health, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. We pray with special intention today for the hungry in our communities and for the agencies and organizations that assist them, particularly food pantries and soup kitchens. We pray for the Diocese of Katakwa, the Anglican Church of Kenya. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Reverend Glenn Druce. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for morning prayer. We are taking a quick, quick swift, short break as we grab more coffee. And uh, I promise to not steal any more rolls out of Laura's hands and to make sure that when she says, I wish to read or I wish to lead, I will actually hear that and respond appropriately. It is always a challenge sometimes to, uh, especially when uh, Epiphany stretches on like this, to remember what day it is, much less what week it is. So this has been Wednesday, the week of the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany, the year of our Lord 2022. And we welcome you home to St. Peter's. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Join us as we gather for prayer twice a day, Monday through Thursday, sometimes even three times as we do today with noonday prayers. And I believe it is in English today. Um, so uh, I'll try not to mess that up. <laughs> Be with us soon as we continue our day. For now, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.